I'm Sam Kumar, a PhD student at UC Berkeley, and I'm going to present MAGE, Nearly Zero-Cost Virtual Memory for Secure Computation. This is joint work with Professor Culler and Professor Pova. Secure computation refers to techniques for computing on encrypted data. For concreteness, I'm going to focus in this talk on a particular kind of secure computation called Secure Multi-Party Computation, or SMPC. In SMPC, you have two or more parties, say Alice and Bob, who each have secret data, say X and Y. SMPC allows them to compute an arbitrary function f applied to their secret data, while guaranteeing that no party learns anything about the other party's secret data except for what's revealed by the output of the function f. To show why this is useful, let me explain an application of SMPC called password reuse detection. Imagine you have two companies that each run websites, where each website has a list of usernames and passwords for users to log in. Unfortunately, some users may reuse their password across the websites. That's bad because if an attacker compromises their password on one website, the attacker can use it to log in as the user on both websites. Thus, the companies may want to detect when users reuse their passwords so that they can ask the users to change their passwords. Now, SMPC allows them to do this without revealing anything about their other users or their passwords to the other company. Now, this is just one example. Secure computation is useful whenever parties need to collaborate but can't directly share their data. For example, multiple competing banks may not want to share who their customers are or what their transactions are with other banks, but they might want to look for suspicious transactions happening across the banks. Similarly, multiple hospitals may not be able to share their patients' data directly with each other due to legal reasons, but they might want to look for patient health patterns across the hospitals for research purposes. Now, secure computation, in theory, is applicable to these use cases, but in practice, its memory overhead can be prohibitive. These applications here are particularly challenging because the parties have large amounts of input data which must be computed on with high memory overhead. Now, the system I'll tell you about today addresses this memory bottleneck, allowing secure computations to scale well beyond the available memory on the system. For example, using our system Mage, we were able to scale that password reuse detection application to 100 million records per party. But first, we'll need to understand where secure computation's memory overhead comes from. Recall that secure computation is about computing on encrypted data. And in order to support computing an arbitrary function, the data has to be encrypted in a special way. For some secure computation schemes, the ciphertexts are much larger than plaintexts. For example, garbled circuits, a classical type of secure multi-party computation, the inputs and intermediate results have to be encrypted in a way that makes them 128 times bigger than the plaintext data would be. This means that if your data would ordinarily fit in memory, it may no longer fit in memory once you encrypt the data for secure computation. It's folklore that memory is problematic for secure computation. For example, prior researchers have said that SMPC in practice only scales to a few thousand input records, and the reason is that once you exhaust the available memory, the computation can become prohibitively slow due to the overheads of OS paging. Now, why is OS paging so slow? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that it's based on heuristics, things like LRU or NRU or LFU, and no single heuristic works well on all workloads. Second, the classical formulation of OS paging is as a reactive procedure. Only when you get a page fault do you bring the page you need into memory. And while you can somewhat mitigate that by applying prefetching, prefetching is itself based on heuristics, which in practice limits how effective it can be. To overcome these shortcomings, we take a new approach to memory management for secure computation, which we develop in our system Mage. Mage can run secure computation at nearly the same speed as if the machine had unbounded physical memory, in effect providing virtual memory for secure computation at nearly zero cost. To achieve this, our key observation is that secure computation programs have a property called obliviousness. Obliviousness means that the sequence of memory accesses issued by a program is independent of its input data. For example, consider a program that has two inputs, A and B, and chooses the smaller of them. This program is not oblivious, 
because depending on the values of A and B, a different branch might be taken, which changes the memory access pattern. To run this program in secure computation, we have to make it oblivious by replacing the branch with multiplexer-like logic. Now it's oblivious because the memory access pattern is independent of the values of A and B. Now I want to pause here and point out that this requirement that the program is oblivious is inherent in the privacy guarantees that secure computation tries to provide. To understand this, imagine you had a secure computation protocol that somehow worked with non-oblivious programs. Then the party running it would be able to observe what memory accesses they're making, and they could infer something about the input to the program based on that. That's bad because secure computation is supposed to hide the input to the program from one party from the other parties. Now our key insight in Mage is that we can leverage the obliviousness of secure computation programs to pre-compute their memory access patterns and tailor our memory management to the memory access patterns. To explain how this helps us, let's revisit the password reuse detection example from earlier. And I'll also take the opportunity to explain how the garble circuits SMPC protocol would apply in this case. First, even before beginning secure computation, the two parties can perform some local pre-processing. In this case, they can sort the data locally by username. In the first part of the garbled circuits protocol, the two parties use a cryptographic primitive called oblivious transfer that allows a second party to obtain both parties' inputs in encrypted form. Then the second party can compute on the encrypted data to obtain the encrypted output. The first party participates in two ways. It helps decrypt the result, and furthermore, at each step of the computation, the second party needs a cryptographic material called garble gates to perform the computation and the first party computes these and sends them to the second party. Now, it's this computation step here that we're most interested in since it's what computes on the encrypted data with high memory overhead. Now, what does the computation do? Well, password reuse detection can be solved via a join, and we sorted our data up front, so it's natural for us to try using a sort merge join. This would have a simple access pattern where we linearly scan the two inputs, merging them as we go, but unfortunately, merging two sorted lists in this way is not oblivious. Instead, it's customary to use an oblivious algorithm like Pythonic sort to merge two sorted lists. It has an access pattern similar to a butterfly, and then we can follow it up with a linear scan to complete the join. Now, from the standpoint of classical OS paging, it's natural to assume that the OS paging system is going to perform worse on Pythonic sort than on the sort merge join, because Pythonic sort has a more complex access pattern that's arguably less predictable. Importantly, Mage is unaffected by this since it can predict the access pattern in advance. Mage will see the code for password reuse detection, realize what its access pattern is going to be, in this case, something based on a butterfly, and then it will tailor its memory management to that access pattern. In effect, Mage leverages the fact that all oblivious programs are in a certain sense exactly predictable. Since we aren't relying on the usual heuristics, it actually doesn't matter how simple or complex the memory access pattern is. In fact, we measured that on a workload that merges two sorted lists using Bytonic sort, Mage can run the program four to five times faster than a solution that relies on the OS paging. Finally, I want to point out that both parties benefit from Mage. Even the first party that's generating garble gates has to perform a computation that's analogous to the second parties in order to do so, and we can apply Mage to that. Now, given the program and some attributes of the target machine, Mage has a planner that outputs a memory management plan. Conceptually, that plan consists of a bytecode describing the computation and a calendar of sorts describing when to transfer memory between uh, memory and storage. At runtime, uh, this memory management plan is used by an interpreter that reads the program's inputs, runs a secure computation, and computes its output. To distinguish our approach from OS paging, we refer to our memory management plan as a memory program, and our planning procedure as memory programming. Now I'm going to talk about how Mage's planner actually generates the memory program. There are two main ideas. The first one is to apply Bilati's algorithm, sometimes called min. Bilati's algorithm is a theoretically optimal paging algorithm that says to evict the page whose next use is furthest out in the future. 
In classical OS paging, you can't use it directly because you don't know what the future accesses will be. But in our memory programming formulation of paging, we do know what the future accesses are going to be, so we can apply Velady's algorithm directly. However, while it is a theoretically optimal paging algorithm, it doesn't produce the best possible memory program because it still operates reactively. It only brings in a page at the moment it's needed. Therefore, we additionally use a knowledge of future accesses to prefetch data using the access pattern. Because using the access pattern, there are no false positives or false negatives. One way to see this is that Bilati's algorithm allows us to optimize for storage bandwidth, and prefetching allows us to mask storage latency. And once we do both of these things, there's very little overhead left, and we can execute it nearly in memory speeds even when paging to storage. Recall why OS virtual memory is slow? Well, we can understand Mage's techniques as exactly addressing these two points. Now let's put everything together and walk through how Mage's Planner works. Mage's Planner accepts the program written in a DSL. Its first stage places the variables and intermediate results in a virtual address space used for planning, and it outputs a bytecode describing the memory access pattern within that virtual address space. The planner's second stage applies Bilati's algorithm to obtain a transformed bytecode that, that fits within the available memory, and does so by paging to storage as needed. Now, Bilati's algorithm actually requires two passes. So first, we make one pass in reverse over the bytecode to analyze when pages are used, and then make our forward pass to actually apply the Bilati's algorithm. The planner's final stage applies prefetching to determine when to initiate memory storage transfers to obtain a paging schedule. In practice, the paging schedule and the physical bytecode are combined together in a single bytecode, which we refer to as the memory program. There are some additional challenges to actually make this work in a system. For example, how to cope with the size of the memory access pattern, how to extract the memory access pattern from the DSL, how to incorporate prefetching into Bladi's algorithm, how to parallelize and distribute the computation, and how to extend MAGE with support for new secure computation protocols. I don't have time in this talk to go over all of these, but you can see the paper for details if you're interested. We implemented MAGE in C++. Our implementation supports garbled circuits, which I've talked about, and CKKS, which is a type of secure computation other than SMPC. Our implementation runs in a user program with no modifications to the operating system. To evaluate our system, we consider three setups. In the unbounded setup, we have enough memory to fit the entire computation. In the mate setup, we use our system mage. And in the OS setup, we rely on OS paging. You should think of unbounded as being a lower bound in how long a computation should take, since nothing is going to beat having enough memory to fit everything. And you should think of OS as being an upper bound in how long a computation should take, because hopefully our system will perform better than the operating system paging. We ran a set of workloads, which represent kernels that would fit within a larger SE application. Uh, and we ran this setup on the cloud using Microsoft Azure. Uh, comparing the white bar to the blue bar, we can see that Mage has very little overhead compared to the unbounded case. And in fact, for seven of the workloads, Mage performs at within 10% of unbounded. Comparing the white bar to the orange bar, we can see that Mage cons consistently outperforms the OS setup. And in fact, for seven of them, it outperforms it by at least four times. Finally, in the LJoin and RSUM benchmarks, Mage was able to outperform the OS setup by an order of magnitude. We also implemented the password reuse detection application in Mage, uh, and, we, um, and we parallelized it over uh, four machines per party and ran the two parties on two separate cloud providers, and they communicated over the wide area. Uh, we were able to scale it up to 100 million user password records per party with two parties using Mage. And furthermore, for a given time budget, Mage can handle a problem size that's three times larger than what OS paging could handle within that time budget. In conclusion, Mage is a planner and runtime for secure computation. It leverages secure computation's obliviousness to rethink memory management. It pre-plans data transfers between memory and storage. And in many cases, it runs secure computation at nearly in-memory speeds. As a parting thought, I want to point out that there are oblivious applications outside of secure computation. In particular, applications written for hardware enclaves are often designed to be oblivious to protect against side channels, and certain plaintext applications like neural network inference are oblivious by nature. 
so major techniques could potentially benefit such applications as well. Thank you for listening.